Right, hey guys, how are we doing? Back with another video from Broken Roan, and today we're checking out what if Ghetto reached his full potential. Because I've said it in a lot of videos um, when it comes to JJK reactions. I feel like Ghetto was like the weakest of, you know, the bunch. Didn't really do a lot. Like, he was a cool antagonist for, you know, Zero. Um, but I feel like he could have done more. So I feel like this is going to potentially look at that with if he reached his full potential. Like, what else could he have done if he was to, you know, not get killed off and then head chopped and then brain plopped and then became that other guy. But uh, yeah, let's get into it. The full potential of a character is something that we very often don't get to see in Jujutsu Kaisen. Whether it was your mindset or your circumstances that limited you in a world as cruel as JJK's, many fan favorite characters weren't able to achieve the heights of their abilities. Man, I just found that unreal. And I've started to look back at some old prodigies in the hopes of getting a glimpse at what they could have become. So in this video, I will be kicking off a series where I take a look at characters in the hopes of answering what their full potential could have been. Oh, this is the first one. All right. Starting off with Suguru Geto, one of the only characters to ever consider themselves a rival for Gojo Satoru. But he really wasn't. He, he really wasn't. <laughs> when it comes to Jujutsu Kaisen and potential, Ghetto was one of the first examples that comes to mind, if only because we know for a fact that his curse technique could have propelled him to heights that he never reached. His time Definitely. in the series was cut short due to his fight with Yuta Okotsu. Yeah, like, he could have done so much. But even pushing Yuta to the extent that he did demonstrates just how powerful and versatile Ghetto was as a sorcerer. With the majority of his forces deployed in different cities, Ghetto faced off against Yuta and Rika and was holding his own. In fact, for a majority of that fight, it was pretty clear that Ghetto was the more dominant one, constantly poking and prodding at Yuta in the hopes of getting a closer look at the bounds of his potential. But yeah, because this was a time where Yuta had only just learn to understand how you can communicate with Rika and you know he'd only just been taught how to do stuff it's really only after the limiters of Yuta's cursed energy are released that Ghetto falls behind him in terms of power but I'm thoroughly convinced that if he simply attacked Yuta with intent to kill without all of his posturing he would have been able to secure Rika or Emoto and greatly amplify his hmm. level of power this is a sentiment that is even shared by a certain character later in the manga now it's very obvious to everyone who watches the series that Rika is extremely powerful yeah. however I think some may underestimate just how powerful she is in the hands of Yuta and many more probably aren't aware of just how she strong she'd be in the hands of someone as competent and experienced as Ghetto. When at the height of okay. her powers, Gojo and Ghetto both make it extremely clear that Rika's Queen of Curse status is not just a cute nickname. Over and over and over again, it is stated that she has boundless cursed energy, and it is repeatedly hammered into the audience's mind that she alone is a powerful enough cursed spirit to propel a scrub like Yuta into the status of being a special grade sorcerer. Yeah, this okay, means that yeah. on her own, she poses enough of a threat to be comparable to other special grades. And this is further substantiated when you notice the fact that even Gojo seems to be somewhat cautious of Rika's full abilities. He straight up says that he'd risk his life to fight against Rika if need be. And while I don't think Gojo is just losing to Rika at this point in the series, the fact that someone as sure of himself as Gojo is saying this does do a lot to move the needle in her favor. Ghetto's strong pursuit of her power also adds context to just how strong she really was. Not only was it a curse so powerful that he thought it could replace his thousands of cursed spirits, but knowing Gojo is the strongest, Ghetto thought that with Rika in his arsenal, his chances of winning the war, which Gojo was involved in, flew up to 99%. Okay, yeah, okay, that does kind of change things, doesn't it? Like, he, hmm, because like I said, he, he must know how powerful Gojo is, like, you know, for him to say, because if we were, like, if Ghetto was to fight Gojo one-on-one, -on -one, full-on, at this point in time, Gojo would just murder him. Um, but for him to think that, yeah, like I said, if he had Rika, Okay. Now you can agree or disagree with Ghetto's personal assessment here, but it once again just adds to the insane boost that all of Volume Zero is trying to tell us that Rika is. Ghetto is someone that knows 
just how strong Gojo really yeah, is. Yeah, yeah. It's something that haunted him and pushed him to this path in the first place. So for him to think that just her as a cursed spirit alone is enough to equal out the playing field speaks quite a bit to just how strong and how wildly powerful she is. So what would happen if Ghetto defeated Yuta, obtained Rika, and rather than confronting Gojo immediately, decided to go back into hiding and bide his time? Sure. Oh, I like this. Okay, I like this. This is cool. Ghetto in character would likely just confront Gojo with his new power, but Ghetto in character doesn't reach his full potential. Today, I'm plugging the controller in, in order to fully maximize his fighting ability, and in order to do that, Ghetto needs to do things that are a bit more logical in the long run. This means that after defeating Akotsu, he would run away and regroup with his faction, in oh, the yeah. hopes of challenging Gojo another day, a day in which he has more preparation for. Oh, with this. Rika on his side, Ge Yo, that looks so cool. There it is. There it is. That's so freaking cool. I love that. That is awesome. Edo's options start flourishing because I'd be having him constantly absorbing cursed spirits just as he was before. But on top of this, Rika's influx of power should also grant him access to new abilities that he never had the potential to tap into. Mm. Not in the sense of copying cursed techniques like Yuta, but more in the sense of adding to his previous level of potential. From the looks of it, Volume Zero Rika is a significant contribution to Yuta's progression as a sorcerer and the potential that he has to be a strong one. Not only does he have reverse curse technique despite being a sorcerer for less than a year, but Ghetto also attributes his ability to grasp complex curse techniques in such a short amount of time, mostly to Rika. Sure, okay. Yuta is a massive part of his own potential, and Gojo makes it clear that his bloodline is probably part of that, but at this point in the story, Rika is the complete manifestation of all of Yuta's abilities. And a Rika that wasn't dispelled by a limit-breaking curse energy blast is a Rika that is going to give Ghetto quite the potential boost. If Rika's massive will of curse energy actually does allow a sorcerer to tap into more potential than they would otherwise have, this means that in the hands of someone who was an experienced special grade, yeah. she could completely change the trajectory of their growth. Okay. What used to be Suguru's limit of power can now be broken through and grant him the awareness needed to access some very useful abilities. It's not for sure, but with Rika giving him a new level of potential, with time, Ghetto should be able to learn both reverse curse technique and even potentially develop his own domain expansion. Gotta say as well, the editing on this video is really freaking good as well. These two things, combined with Rika herself just giving him a massive boost to his fighting ability, would lead to a special grade that is probably starting to get into that Gojo range of strength. I know that sounds crazy, especially Ooh, when is. Ghetto hasn't shown anything near that level of power in mm -hmm. the story. But just think about it like this. Ghetto is the only known special grade sorcerer who did not possess a domain expansion or reverse curse technique. Uh -huh. So what we're doing is adding two of the most broken abilities in the series onto a guy that was already in the top percent of the verse without, without them. them. Not only that, yeah. but you are giving him a curse spirit that on its own makes Yuta a special grade sorcerer. At oh this point, God, yeah. potential unleashed Ghetto is almost just a fusion of Yuta and Ghetto's ability. Yeah, a battery full of limitless right, yeah. cursed energy excellent physical stats, reverse curse technique, a domain, and an army of curses that number in the thousands would all be at Suguru Gedo's disposal, and it's something that I think the entire world would have to take seriously. Yeah. I know Gojo is Gojo, and he doesn't really fit into our conventions of strength, but I don't think it's crazy to say that with all of these added abilities, Gedo would shoot up to becoming at least someone that would show up in the same dimension as him. Suguru Gedo would truly be a force to be reckoned with, but this is just the tip of the iceberg, as I've only been talking about abilities that he'd be able to unlock if he used information available to anime only. When taking a look at the manga, things start to get even crazier. If you'd like to avoid spoilers, skip to the time code on screen. It's okay, I'm up to date, kind of, but this was done a while ago. So yeah, I I'm, I'm think I'm like 10 chapters behind now. I'm just kind of leaving it for a bit until I get back to it and, and binge. But if not, buckle up, because things start escalating very quickly from here. Using Kenjaku as a framework for Ghetto just lets us know how much higher this guy can go, even when only talking about the manipulation of his own technique. He's already caught up to and surpassed Kenjaku's canon level of strength just due to the added power of Rika, but if he starts amplifying his low-level curse spirits with all of the added curse energy that Rika provides, very similarly to Kenjaku, we'd be looking at a curse spirit army that could eat through a battalion of grade ones like butter. Kenjaku is able to amp his low-level curse spirits up enough to make light work of Choso and Yu 
Ryuji. But imagine what they'd be able to do if Rika's boundless energy was added to the mix. Even the lesser recreation of Rika is physically more powerful than current Yuta, and it's implied that she is merely a pale imitation of the power that Rika possessed in Volume Zero. Right, yeah. A cursed spirit even stronger than that, with a seemingly endless pool of energy, would be supplying curses with extra juice. And in the worst case scenario, if you were to be fighting Ghetto, you would not only have to deal with thousands of amplified cursed spirits, but you'd also be fighting Ghetto and Rika joining the fray themselves in order to just really ruin your day. To add insult to injury, if Ghetto figures out that he can absorb the curse techniques of cursed spirits through the use of Maximum Uzumaki, he'd just become even more broken. Oh, now, it's hypothesized yeah. by Yuki that even with this technique absorption, the user can only activate the stolen ability once. This hasn't been confirmed matter-of-factly one way or the other, as of the time of this video at least, but even if Maximum Uzumaki had this pretty severe handicap, Ghetto gets the benefit of being able to just absorb any curse technique that he deems fit for himself, to use in a very last ditch effort. The added technique limit that Kenjaku may have can easily be offset by the fact that Ghetto can use Rika as a storage device for all of his abilities, just mm. like Yuta does with his copy yeah, curse okay. technique. And in the event that these stolen techniques aren't actually one use, what you have now is just Yuta, Kenjaku, and Ghetto combined into one. And that gets pretty ridiculous when you think about it. That is absolutely mad this is so cool i know people look at ghetto as the weakest of the special grade sorcerers yeah like yeah and i can't really blame them especially considering that his time in the story was basically concluded in volume zero but the potential that he had with his curse technique is actually absurd all he would have had to do is defeat yuda in volume zero and we may be looking at an entirely different story in a world where he absorbed rika and potentially even met the disaster curse spirit similarly to kenjaku he would have a monopoly oh, oh, oh. on special grades on top of all the other insane abilities he'd get in this scenario. When you have Ghetto prevail in his fight with Yuta, the possibilities for him as a sorcerer just truly seem endless. Even in the event that you don't think that full potential Ghetto is able to reach the heights of Gojo, that's fine. But I will say that his standings in the power rankings of Jujutsu Kaisen improve pretty significantly. Characters that would previously prove tough or even impossible to beat for him would become opponents that he could handle rather easily. The likes of Yuki, Yuta, and and even Kenjaku would all fall victim to a potential unleashed Suguru Ghetto. Yuta was already someone that debatably wasn't strong enough to beat him at full power before, and even if you think that Yuta has grown significantly since Volume Zero, in this scenario it's pretty clear that Ghetto has as well. <laughs> Holy shit, you grew The same thousand <laughs> plus cursed spirits that he would have in his arsenal would go up against Yuta, but on top of this, Ghetto would have a very clear and distinct answer for Rika, with that answer being Rika. I think it would be a very interesting fight to see Yuta with all of his cursed techniques that he's absorbed over time, going up against Ghetto with all of the cursed spirits and techniques that he's also absorbed over time. But in the end, I think it's pretty clear that Ghetto would be able yeah. to snatch the victory here. Yuki might prove to be a bit more of an issue for Ghetto than Yuta, even at this point in his development, simply because their technique is a bad match for his. I wouldn't say that Yuki is outright stronger than Yuta, but the fact that she would be able to one-shot basically any and all cursed spirits that Ghetto has in his arsenal would prove to be somewhat difficult. But with Rika boosting all of his abilities and reverse curse technique being there in order to help him recover, he should still be able to claim a victory against Yuki Sakumo. Out of all of the characters that Ghetto couldn't beat before, Kenjaku would probably be the toughest matchup for him, also because his abilities make up a large portion of Ghetto's true potential, but I still hold to the idea that he would prevail in the end. The superior domain expansion and gravity curse technique would be countered by Rika and all of the techniques that Ghetto would have stored up and stolen over the years. You could go back and forth over whether or not you think Kenjaku's techniques and knowledge is better, and when we're talking about just taking Suguru Ghetto and then adding Yuta levels of cursed energy on top of the already high amounts of energy he possesses, I simply don't think you're having Kenjaku and Ghetto go blow for blow evenly. With the amplification that extra cursed energy would be able to get Ghetto, even the basics of their close quarters combat would be significantly different. Being able to beat the likes of those three special grades really only leaves Gojo and Sukuna on the table 
as superior sorcerers or superior combatants in the series, period. And I know that earlier in this video, I said that Ghetto would start to approach or even rival that domain of strength. But even in thinking that, I'm pretty aware that Gojo's abilities just make him a bad matchup for Ghetto. Without being able to spam domains at the same rate that Gojo is, it's just going to be tough to actually land hits on Gojo, even if in an otherwise equal circumstance, they'd be even. Sukuna is even crazier, especially when you factor in all of the unknown abilities he could have in the back pocket. So at the end of the day, he jumps from someone that was vaguely top 10 in terms of fighting ability to a pretty inarguable top three. Not too shabby for a character who was killed off in the series before it even really started. His potential ceiling just seems that high when elevated by the power of Rika. Let me know if you think Ghetto could actually rival Gojo in this hypothetical scenario or if I'm just blowing smoke. And if you enjoyed this style of video and like to see more, subscribe and let me know which character you'd like to see me dissect next down in the comments. I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you in the next one. Very cool. Very well edited video as well. Very informative. Um, cool what if scenario. I like that. I don't think he still gets to the same level as Gojo, but you never know. Like, we've never seen it. It's a hypothetical, isn't it? Um, like, Gojo and Sukuna are, like, the pinnacle of JJK. Um, but, yeah, that was really cool. Uh, I'll potentially <laughs> check out another um, full potential video from Broken Roman at some point. Again, I... I'm just trying to check out so much stuff. I'm not ignoring the suggestions you guys are leaving in the comments. I'm just adding them to the list and I eventually get around to them. I do have a full-time job outside of this that I, I, I work. Uh, I've been doing close to like 50-odd hours every week these last couple of weeks. So it's been quite difficult to get the two videos up every day. <laughs> and I repurpose certain clips for um, TikTok videos. So if you want to type my channel name in on TikTok... I do piano tunes on there sometimes and little reviews of, of anime episodes that I like. But anyway, I'm a busy man. Thank you to my patrons. If you want to have your name at the end of every video, uh, link in the description to the Patreon page. One dollar a month is all I ask to help support the channel. It is greatly appreciated. Thanks for that. And thank you all for watching. What do you guys think of that? you guys think of this? Click like, subscribe if you haven't already. Leave comments down below. Let me know what I should watch to discuss in future videos. I'll see you guys all you guys next time.